Today's Mass is being offered for the peoples of our parishes, so do remember, if you will, to uh, pray for especially those that are finding themselves being stressed by all the things that are going on currently. Uh, let us uh, stand together and say the entrance antiphon for the uh, uh, Thursday of the fifth week of uh, Easter. Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose grace, through though sinners, uh, we are uh, made just and not uh, uh, pitiable, but uh, made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And after much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the, of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we had been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of, our, uh, of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they the whole assembly fell silent, and, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had performed among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon had, uh, has described how God first uh, concerned himself with acquiring for, from among the Gentiles a people of his name, the words of the prophets agreed with this, as it is written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the fallen uh, hut of David. From its ruins, I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek uh, out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who uh, turn to God, but let them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat, strangled, uh, the meat of strangled animals in blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. 
Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so all I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. And as I was saying yesterday, we have a bit of a cliffhanger left over from yesterday in today's Acts of the Apostles. How is it that the church is going to resume, uh, resolve the, the conflict that has uh, presented itself now trying to mix Gentiles with Jews? And of course, as we saw in the life of Jesus, you just didn't do that. Jews had nothing to do with Gentiles. And now what we have is a conflict, uh, something that has to be resolved. And the church reacts in, in the first council of Jerusalem. And what does the church do? It looks to who? The Pope. It looks to Peter. Peter's the one who is trying to bring a sense and, and a balance to what needs to be done. And of course, what does the Bishop of Jerusalem do uh, uh, in response, trying to find peace and in harmony? He responds, James responds to, to Peter and says what Peter says we should do. And, and by the way, this is how we can come to understand it by quoting scripture itself from the Old Testament and to realize that this is God's plan. The God's plan was for the, the church to be united, just not for the Jews, but worldwide. And now what we do with the Council of Jerusalem is to hear what? Uh, uh, we have James saying, you know, you need to write a letter. Let's go ahead and write a letter. Another word for a letter is an epistle or also, uh, you know, a, a document that, that comes from uh, an apostolic source. It comes from the apostles themselves. So now what we have is just like Vatican II. We have all these documents and constitutions and, and suggestions that are being written by the apostles, the magisterium of the church. And what does it say? Avoid unlawful marriage. So I always love it. I always love it. How can the church get in people's bedrooms? Why are they getting into beach, in people's bedrooms? They have no business being in people's bedrooms. Well, I have some really good news for you. That's something to probably really shock you. The church has been in people's bedrooms from the very beginning, right here at the Council of Jerusalem. And it says you have to avoid unlawful marriages. You have to marry the way that the church and the way that Jesus Christ teaches us to marry. And also to observe different things that, that we do follow in our traditions. And, and of course, as it says here too, to follow the commandments of of God. And it's what Jesus says. If you want to be my follower, if you want to have perfect happiness, follow the commandments. Do what God has uh, given to us by Moses and back on Mount Sinai, following the Ten Commandments. And to realize that these are not ten good ideas or ten suggestions or, or ten uh, uh, things that would really be kind of neat if we do it. But no, they are commandments. This is our covenant with God. If you want to have a covenant with God the Father. We must follow the Ten Commandments. And when we do fall, to realize we have a solution, don't we? And that that, uh, the, that falling is given to us by the apostles themselves through Jesus Christ, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession, and knowing that all things can be rectified. So this is uh, something to kind of think about in our Easter celebration today, is that we're not abandoned by God. We always have an ability to to return to God the Father anytime that we need to, like the prodigal son. And of course, like the prodigal son, I think we've been feeling it, haven't we? We've been out there with the swine lately, and now uh, we, we new hunger for, for returning to God our Father, 
to Jesus Christ, our eldest brother, to return home. So again, uh, Bishop uh, Donald has granted us the opportunity now to return to public mass. And of course, we will celebrate that tomorrow at 515 here at the church at St. Wilfred's. Uh, and uh, I'll be here early because I know that uh, people are going to kind of feel you know, disoriented coming back to the house of God, and especially being able to find your own pews. Uh, some people have already marked their pews. Great. Uh, yeah, but I do encourage you to come in early, uh, figure out how, how it's all oriented and see where you'd like to sit and to claim your own. And, uh, and now do remember that when you do claim the pew that you have, we're, we're, I'm going to ask, if you will, to, to stay there, to not to trade off or all that. We want to keep our, our germs to ourselves. So every household will have their own pew. It will be reserved for you, just like the good old days. Remember the good old days of, of, of the uh, pew rents? Were you there at all at that during that time? Okay. Yes, my grandfather always talked about the pew rents at St. Margaret's and in Kimball. Everybody had their own pew, you know. And I think that tradition is still there. I have a lot of people that you know, talk about, oh, this is the pew that my family has always had. Well, we're going to kind of go back to that tradition as well. But we do have to keep six feet of separation. So you, if you do have an old family pew, well, just try to get as close as you can to that pew. And uh, those that are having large families, uh, we'll have, the, have them have their own pew. But uh, I, I think we'll work it out. But uh, it is a great time, a great opportunity for those that are hungering for our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Welcome home. Welcome back to, to public celebration of Mass as we celebrate tomorrow, St. Isidore and also his wife, the patron saint of farmers and ranchers, asking for their, their uh, invocation in heaven as as the farmers and ranchers are now getting ready again for, for uh, the planting season. Or they probably have already started some of the planting, haven't they? So, so we do want to ask the saints who know exactly what it is to be in the pews to, to be with us, making intercession in their prayers in heaven for the sake of farmers and ranchers in our area, in our parish. So with that now, let us turn to God with our petitions, our supplications, knowing that our Father does hear us when we call out to him. So we do want to pray for, for the universal church. Let us pray for, for Pope Francis and Bishop Swain, the successors, the Bishop Swain, but Bishop Donald now, Bishop uh, de Groot, uh, old habits. But we do also need to also remember Bishop Swain as he's retired amongst us as well. For, so for the leadership of the church, may, may the Holy Spirit be with them as they bring about God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we also want to pray as we remember in particular particular Father Paul uh, himself being a Carmelite. Let us pray for all those who have vowed themselves to God that they uh, that uh, with his help they may be remain faithful and keep the, uh, their resolve in, in the life of uh, giving everything up for of this world for the sake of the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us also pray for peace, the peace that Jesus Christ brought to the apostles in the upper chamber, a peace that comes from heaven, not of earthly making, a peace that there may be among nations that delivered from all turmoil, especially with this uh, coronavirus that is going around this pandemic, that people may receive God in freedom of heart and to know that there, there is uh, something beyond this world. I mean, any anxieties this world can throw is, is nothing in comparison to the greatness that we find in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we do want to also pray for the elderly who suffer from isolation and, and also the potential of sickness too. I'm sure that they're feeling very, very concerned, uh, being very vulnerable to this, uh, this uh, virus that they may be strengthened by our love uh, of them as, as our brothers and sisters, especially as we do want to take care of uh, being uh, not uh, near them, especially if they can be contaminated by, by this, little, uh, uh, this little bug, this invisible little bug that threatens lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and also for ourselves, not only just gathered here, but also those that are uh, in, throughout our entire parish communities, that God may not uh, cease uh, to sustain us with things that of this life, uh, uh, we may know uh, how to use them in, in you know, such a way that they may be uh, hold now, uh, forever now, the things that endure in, in the uh, for heaven and for the sake of our eternal reward, our, our eternal home, heaven. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we do also want to pray for our parishes. Uh, as we do remember the, the peoples of, of our parishes, we offer this Mass. So let us now turn to God in the silence of our hearts with those petitions that are dearest to us. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May your mercy, we beseech, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, by the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you, our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, the lamb of sacrifice, therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And again, if you look at your uh, word among us or living with Christ, let us say together the communion antiphon. Christ died for all that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. And again, in your charity, if you will, do remember to pray for the peoples of our parishes when we offer this Mass today.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is a time of great celebration. So again, as I said in the homily here at St. Wilfred's 515 Mass, uh, I'll be here early to help people to kind of figure out where, where, where everything is. And then 7 p.m., 7 p.m. at St. Joseph, both Father Paul and myself will be celebrating the Mass there, 7 p.m. at uh, St. Joseph's in Wessington Springs. And uh, then, of course, the weekend schedule, uh, go online to see the bulletin if you weren't able to pick up the bulletin. But we are going to be having a Mass in the Artesian and of Mass in Duncan, uh, and Father Paul will be doing the Mass in Duncan on Saturday. And then, of course, uh, 8 o'clock Mass is uh, uh, going uh, to be at uh, Wessington Springs. I'll be celebrating that Mass. Uh, our Father Paul, take, I take that back, Father Paul is going to be doing Wessington Springs. And then 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday here at St. Wilfred. So uh, kind of getting back to a normal schedule. So I had put in the uh, mail. Uh, kind of the schedule and also the guidelines that Bishop Donald has set forth for us. And uh, we'll try to follow them. Uh, you know, I know there's going to be a little adjustments going on. So, uh, but I did get everything in the mail. Westington Springs, you'll be getting yours in the mail tomorrow. It'll be in the mailbox tomorrow. Uh, but I already got uh, Artesian all set up. Well, uh, St. Wilfred's is ready to go. I'll have uh, St. Joseph's done tonight. I'm going to go over there tonight to set up everything. And also the guidelines have been set out for Duncan as well. So spread the word. Spread the word. Things are coming back to normal. It isn't normal, but it's getting closer to normal than it was. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Look forward to seeing everybody uh, uh, tomorrow if you can make it. And again, don't feel obliged. It's just a great celebration for farmers and ranchers as we celebrate St. Isidore and his wife, Maria.